Hey friends, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am super excited. Aaron and I have a very special guest today, a dear friend of mine, a mentor of mine, somebody who's played a very influential role in my life and my career. Reed Davis is here from FDN. Welcome, Reed. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic, Sachin, and thanks for having me on. Nice to see you, Aaron. Great to see you, Reed. Aaron, how's your day going so far? I'm loving it. It's the uh, first official day of summer, right? And uh, it seems like the Seattle weather has just turned from a little drizzly to perfect. So, uh, All right. The cloud, uh, clouds got the message, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I was going to bed last night and it was like 10 o'clock and it was still bright outside. And Deepa reminded me, yeah, hey, today's actually one of the longest days of the year. And now the days get a little bit shorter. So for those of you that were complaining that the days aren't long enough, um, you know, they're only going to get shorter from here on out until until December at some point. So make the most of today and each and every day moving forward. Um, I'm you know I'm uh, traveling today. I'm going to Salt Lake City and then going to Park City for a mastermind. So I'm super stoked about that. Aaron, what's uh, what's your week looking like? What are you excited about this week? Well, I'm I'm excited about uh, our upcoming event. We're working hard at it, and uh, you know I'm I'm heads down working, but maybe I'm definitely going outside in between that's for sure yeah set up a, set up a little chair outside and, and reed's joining us from san diego reed uh, you were mentioning earlier your mom's over so that's super special getting to spend time with your mom and you mentioned how old she is do you care to share uh she's she's very proud to be 92 and going strong she's just written her sixth poetry book i'm actually going to have her on one of the events i do for my students uh, this Friday and have her read some of her poetry because I'm always talking about my mom and now that she's here in San Diego with me and by the way Aaron I'm glad you're having a sunny day but we haven't had a cloud in the sky since for weeks I, I can't remember the last time we had any rain or clouds or anything just every day and it is, and it is the longest day of the year today so we enjoy these amazing sunsets uh, you know at 8 8 30 at night whatever time it is and uh, everything's looking really good Sachin, thank you. All right, awesome. And uh, congratulations to your mom. That's super exciting. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. She, uh, she writes uh, from the heart and um, she's a brilliant woman anyway. So her, you know, it's good poetry. She goes around to these senior centers reading her poetry. You know, she's a sort of a little old English lady and she does a little hop and skip when <laughs> When she uh, when she gets on stage or whatever and reads very dramatically, it's all you know, super super cool. Amazing. Is she a client of yours? Does she practice? Funny you should ask. Uh, yeah, you know, she did some of the lab work and the diet things uh, years ago. So ninety two. I remember her. One of her doctors telling her, "Whatever you're doing, keep doing it." You know, some physicians they they're not really what sure is going on in the natural world but when their patients who they care for and want to see do well uh, show up and they need less medication or they, they get the kid off of medication they're thrilled they're as thrilled as, as we are when that happens and so keep doing what you're doing and, and she's she's doing it i mean I, I live on this property that's all hills and rocks and valleys and stuff and i've developed a lot of my landscaping we took her all the way down the rocks out to this uh, remote kind of fire pit and that we have and then she and she walked all the way down all the way back up no cane you know <laughs> so i love that i mean you know who better to be able to help and serve with your message than your mom or your dad or someone that's really close to you that you know, really means the world to you, who brought you into this world, so to speak, right? Yeah, she's been talking about that, that you know, on the day you were born, da 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 da, da. she's got, got funny stories, you know, going all the way back, and my wife, I have a new wife for the last couple of years, and she's, she's learning a lot about me, some of it I'm not so sure I wanted her to know, <laughs> 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 yeah, but what, you know, moms, they're straight up on, especially at 92, they have no no pretension. It's just, th this is the way they saw it. And that's the deal. <laughs> well, they got to get that song out of them, right? They, they got to reveal your deepest, darkest, uh, you know, secrets so that uh, the stories live yeah. on. Yeah. If you're in a relationship, talk to the mom, you'll, then you'll really know who you're dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> 
-hmm. Well, you know, as, as we're all kind of aware, and even who's tuned in right now, there is this concept of a looming recession that's taking place. And Aaron and I, a couple of weeks ago, talked about how to really, you know, navigate through uh, what's, what's to come. And, and of course, there is uncertainty uh, in what's to come. However, what I love about uh, the conversation, you know, I'd love to have with you today is how you're helping practitioners. Like what, uh, what is your mind frame? And before we even get into that, in case somebody's living under a rock and doesn't know uh, what you do, why don't you tell us first what it is that you do uh, and, and tell us a little bit more about FDN. Well, thanks. Yeah, I teach health coaches and health entrepreneurs and practitioners of all walks of life how to use functional lab work to identify entire constellations of healing opportunities so that you can act upon them with all natural drug-free solutions. So we simply find out what's really wrong and help people fix it. And so I started 23 years ago noticing that the patients coming in our office had all been to six or eight practitioners already, or 10, and they weren't better yet. And I personally had never really been to a doctor before. I didn't, I didn't know what the system was like, but I, I assessed real quickly that it's a failed system. And I decided I'd be the last person they needed to see. Now that's naive as hell, uh, but I thought that I would give it a try. And um, I was sincerely interested in uh, people's health not, and, and my own too. So I went on this journey of discovery and running labs and running labs. And I soon became a guy that ran more labs than anyone else in the country, including doctor's offices that had five doctors working there. And, um, and at some point, probably after 10 years of that, uh, I decided to teach. So I teach this course, it's called FDN, Functional Diagnostic Nutrition. And now, and uh, Sachin and even his wife is, is a part of this community of people who work all over the world. There's no geographical boundaries and uh, time is your own because uh, you can set your own hours when you're the boss. <laughs> it's a great thing about being the boss, you know, and, yeah. uh, and help people. I love it. So, you know, what's really fascinating to me is we have this really bloated healthcare system, I... which we've invested billions upon billions, if not trillions of dollars into, and it still doesn't solve people's, you know, challenges, things that seem so obvious to myself, to you, Reed, to Aaron and the students that you've trained, including myself. Uh, it's one of the first things I did when the pandemic hit was I reached out to you and I said, Hey, I need to become an FDN because I can see where the ball is rolling and I need to diversify how I can help people. And I also need to have a global approach that can reach people anywhere in the world. And that's one of the things that I'm so grateful for that FDN has done for, for me and many of the practitioners uh, that we coach and train. So thank you for creating that. And thank yeah. you for creating um, maybe, you know, without even necessarily the foresight of what was going to happen, but kind of knowing the direction that healthcare was going in, where we need to make it more affordable. We need to help people get to the root cause. We need to make it less capital intensive. And we need to make sure that anyone who is passionate about being in this space has an opportunity to be in this space. You know, you've probably heard countless stories of people saying, you know, that uh, med school bus uh, or that train has left the station or that chiropractic or naturopathic uh, train has left the station and now they're stuck being an accountant, even though they're so passionate about being healthy. And you, you know, have created a system that gives people a second life and an opportunity to be of service in a way that's meaningful and powerful for them. So I absolutely love that. And I'd love to know, what are you um, saying to your practitioners right now? What's the messaging around this let's call it a recession for lack of a better term, but what's the messaging in your community around this and what are your practitioners doing to best serve as, as times change? Oddly, it hasn't changed from day one, even though today's, the times are different than it was 23 years ago. The message is the same. Is that, remember I told you, people coming in had seen 10 practitioners. I was disgusted that they were giving control of their health to someone else. And today's 
uh, there are lots of powers uh, that would like to have control over your health and you can't let it happen. You've got to maintain control over your own health. And that way you can help others get control over their health. We, the people, need to be in control. The labs you can run, and who owns the data? Who owns lab data? The person whose data it belongs to. My, it's my data. It's my saliva, urine, blood, stool, whatever. Anything that that reveals belongs to me, and I can use that data any way I want. And that's how I get control of my health. I have my own way of looking at that data. You know, um, and it's, by the way, it's important to realize these labs, you know, they don't care about the diagnosis either. They just want to produce really good, solid data that we, the people, can use. See, so it's that kind of data first. Then a doctor might look at it and say, oh, well, here's your diagnosis. Well, before that, the data is just telling us things about ourselves, what's going on inside, and we can act upon that data in a natural way. And so that's the message um, counter to, let me just contrast it with, um, in 1903, Thomas Edison said a very famous thing. He said, the doctor of future will provide no medicine, but will interest his patient instead in the care of the human frame and nutrition and things like that. Well, guess what? He was a brilliant guy, but he was wrong about that one because the, the drug industry last year sold $520 billion worth of drugs. Mm. And in his day, it was, there was only nine drug companies. You know, Matt, it, it, so he was wrong about that one. Um, there are those who would have control and monopolies over our health if we let them. So the message is, no, that control belongs to you and it's your responsibility and duty. And, and as helpers, we get to play a really important uh, part in that. Yeah, you know, as an FDN uh, myself, what's really cool about the system that you've created is it's very much in a line with our company mantra, which is the doctor of the future is the patient. And you actually give people like it, it's actually quite interesting because you could become a health coach and a certified FDN practitioner, which gives you kind of makes the world your oyster in terms of who you can service and who you can help. But I almost propose this to somebody who is, uh, is bouncing around from doctor to doctor and not finding answers and spending sometimes tens of thousands of dollars. Like I'm sure you've heard tons of stories like that. And I'm like, what if you just spent that time learning about how your body works and became trained in how to interpret these labs, but also be able to order them for yourself and become your own practitioner first. And then, uh, and then you could obviously service others if that's the case. What percentage of people read go through FDN uh, for their own healing journey first, primarily? Do you have any it's data a, on that? It, well, every one of them seems to have an issue that they either knew about or discovered once they started the course. And then in the course of completing the training, uh, you work on yourself. And, you know, we've graduated close to 4,000 people now. I think my bio needs to be updated. Um, I interviewed personally the first 2,000 graduates. Now I have some staff that help me keep things straight. But, but um, I personally interviewed the first 2,000 graduates, Sachin, and every one of them said, I'm so glad I took your course. You know, the fact that I was able to overcome my own thyroid or irritable bowel or chronic fatigue or you name it. Um, that was well, that alone was worth the price of admission. And so they're just so happy. And now they can go out and do, you know, duplicate that with others. That's what the training's about is you, you uh, fix yourself so that you can help fix others. And we know that, that we're not actually doing any fixing. It's the body that heals. I'm just using loose terms. Um, you know, Voltaire said in 17th, 18th century, that uh, the art of medicine was distracting the patient long enough so the body would heal us. <laughs> I love that. And so we use that innate. And it's just an amazing thing. So everybody, every, there's your question is, everybody's got something they can improve. And going through the course, you'll discover what those things are specifically. But then, of course, we don't treat any of it specifically. We treat the entire body the organism itself you know every cell tissue organ system 
we it all gets treated or self-treated uh, non-specifically through the through the natural protocols. Reed, Reed I'm, I'm curious. Over the time you've been working with uh, clients and patients, have you seen a change in the types of people? Maybe it's demographics, the demand for you know this approach grow over time. Like, what have you seen from the very beginning till even now with the last couple of years of the 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 pandemic? I've seen just a multiplication or, or um, you know, acceleration of the same things I saw, again, back in the office. It was mostly women because they seem to care more about their health and they pay attention to owies. Men are still being taught somewhat to ignore their owies and, you know, just shrug it off and suck it up and walk it off and, you know, all these tough things us men do. Um, but then we were having a lot of success with these women, like a miracle, I mean, just stuff like that. it's amazing what was happening before our eyes. Some of it we expected, some of it we had, didn't expect at all. And uh, so these were, this is where the discoveries were made. But um, eventually when they're doing really good, guess who they bring you? They bring their husband in or they bring their kids in. And I could just tell you so many times a, a woman was, you know, my husband's got, do you think you could help him too? Or, you know, my kid is being told, one lady said her kid, she, she got a call from the principal of his, her son's school that said he should be on medication. And uh, she was distraught about that. He's poking the other kids, not paying attention. He needs to be on, Ritalin was the drug of the day back then. And I said, well, do you think he has a Ritalin deficiency? And she didn't think it was funny. I thought it was funny. And she goes, that's not funny. She goes, I no, I don't. And I don't. I said, well, no, these are medical professionals that work at the school. No, these are just as teachers and, and the principal. I said, well, let, let's, you know, yes, I'd be willing to help. See if I can help. Ran a few labs. And within three weeks after going over the labs with the mother, I never even met the child, nine-year-old, <clears throat> being told he should be on drugs. And... Um, Within three weeks after giving her some simple instructions for her child, the principal of the school tracked me down. And he was, the, the turnaround was so amazing. And he said, What'd you put Billy on? <laughs> As if I just had some magic pill or potion or drug, you know, something. I said, No, it's not like that here. We don't work that way. But anyway, so all kinds of these things. To answer your question, Women still seem to care a little bit more or be more focused, but they bring us their husbands and kids, and that's a good thing. And some men, of course, on, on their own, we're becoming more self-aware and enlightened, you know, so it's all good. You know, one of the things that uh, some people may not know is some of our favorite influencers are actually FDN graduates. Um, so I'd love for you to share who some of those, um, you know, influencer FDNs are for those of us that may not know. I, I've got a couple of names in my mind, but I'd love for you to share. Yeah, I'd love to see who has uh, sort of um, come into your view. There's so many. Um, I'm thinking of people like Sean Croxton, who's doing amazing work, Wendy Myers, who's doing amazing work in detox, and, and others like that. Jen Maleka, who is a top, top. She came to us uh, as a personal trainer. Some weeks she was making two to five hundred dollars, you know, and struggling to make her bills. She's now she told me the other day she's making over half a million dollars a year just helping people. So we we've completely transformed people's life. Um, other people, a guy named Terry, he was a personal trainer, and he was struggling to keep his retention up. He was he had a lot of he's a very good personal trainer big muscular guy and all that knows everything about the, the body on the mus muscular skeletal side. Um, but his patients or clients were dropping out because they had other health problems. He didn't know how it affects, you know, whether it was again, chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and irritable bowel, and it would affect how, their performance in the gym. So once he took our course, he was able to run some labs and instruct them on those things also, educate them on what they could do. Now he's spending all the time he used to spend marketing to get new ones to replace the ones he was losing. He doesn't do that anymore. He's a completely referral-based practice. And he spends that marketing time kayaking with his wife on a nearby river. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just, you know, that's, that's, a t that's I don't want to say, you know, results will vary. Of course, we have to say that. 
But uh, people who take the initiative, who care, uh, seem to do really, really well. I love it. I love it. Love the work that Sean's doing. Uh, Michael Rosalind is another graduate oh, of yeah. your program. Diane Kayser uh, is yeah. another graduate that came to mind. And then uh, JP Sears, was he a graduate of yours? Sears, yeah, for sure. And so is um, Jason Prawl, who started the Longevity Project. And uh, Joe Rignola, who's now working with uh, Dr. Tom O'Brien, who's a good friend of mine, and uh, and on and on. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if I don't yeah. mention your name and your listing is nifty, and I apologize, you know, Reed. <laughs> 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 well, I, I mean, I think I think it's helpful for people to know that, right? That there's many people that are out there that are super influential in our space that have walked, you know, along this path with you. And that shaped their career. It shaped their confidence. It shaped their message. It's also, I'm sure in many ways, shaped their own personal health so that they can show up in the way that they do with the energy and the vitality that they have. Um, Reed, I know that, go ahead, you were going to say something? I was just thinking of others as coming to me and I love being that stepping stone. You know, I say Michael uh, McAvoy and uh, Brendan Vermeer, these people now have their own courses. Because what they did is they took all the general knowledge and, and really it's the way of thinking. It's the way mm -hmm. of thinking that they got. And then they applied it to their own particular health problem. Now they become sort of a, a, a guru sort of in that area, you know, a guide. They've become a guide for others with that similar problem. Yeah, it's really like I, I, I find that what you've created is very fertile soil. And so when you plant the right seeds in there, people who have big aspirations, it provides them with the nutrients that they need, so to speak, and the environment that they need for massive growth to take place. So, you know, kudos to you. I'm sure you're super proud of these students and the thousands of others that have also graduated that are out there in the world doing awesome work. I know that uh, we were talking earlier and you've kind of been, uh, you know, what I admire about you is you're constantly kind of reinventing yourself, but also reinventing the course and, and improving it. So with the principles called Kaizen, which is this never ending process of uh, self-improvement, but also improving the things that we touch. And uh, I know that there's been some upgrades that you've made to the course. So I'd love to hear about that. And I'd also love to hear uh, when you're building this course, who is the avatar that you have in mind? Is it a an existing practitioner? Is it the house? Uh, is it the housewife or mom, a homemaker who really wants a second career? Is it somebody who's already in a career and frustrated? Is it the person who's seeking a health solution? Like who is it that you keep? Maybe it's all of those people, but who is front and center for you as you're as you're building yeah, these it's, materials? Up? It's it's all the above, uh, but because we don't turn anyone away. I once had a college or university approached me about adding some of my uh, content and training to their curriculum and they wanted it to be really exclusive and they they um they talked to me about you know like I said look why would I turn anyone away if someone wants to come and learn if it's just some uh, quote-unquote housewife who just wants to help her own family why would I send her away because she doesn't have all the credentials and background and prerequisites and things like that so we'll help anyone uh, it, whether it's on their personal journey or their professional journey. But having said that, most uh, FDNs do have a college degree, not necessarily in the sciences, but they've been through, they've uh, matriculated through some kind of pro uh, process somewhere. They also have a certificate or two in some um, technique or modality. They could be a personal trainer, a nutritionist, they could be a Reiki practitioner, they could be massage um, and things like that. There's lots that come with certificates and more the the mental emotional spiritual aspects um, even an NLP coach things like that and a lot are licensed as well chiropractors acupuncturists we've even as you well know had some MDs and DOs go through and it it it's for them it's like another form it's like wow I wish I had this for my master's course instead of going through everything I went through because um, for the money we charge is just this much compared to what they spent which is this much and the mm -hmm. amount of time and things it's miraculous god I wish I had just done after the end you know but, but um you know so so that's the demographic kind of it's, it's everybody but usually um the one the one thing I would say if there was a prerequisite it there's two you gotta want to help other people 
Mm. If you have that in you, and, and I've had an enemy since I was a kid. I used to rake the old people's uh, leaves. I grew up, you know, where you live in Toronto, and there's a lot of leaves in the fall. I'd be oh, yeah. raking their leaves for no charge. I'd be shoveling their snow. I would just get up early and go shovel their snow because I knew it was a nice thing to do. You know, the, the Boy Scout mentality that I grew up in Toronto with. So you got to want to help others and you got to be willing to walk the talk. That's it. If you'll do that. So that's the demographic pretty much. Again, it leans with women, but we're getting men from who were engineers and um, other just these sort of things they're tired of doing. And they want to switch gears and they've got a health problem. So they're, and you know, it's a huge growing profession anyway, the idea of uh, health counseling, coaching, what have you. So, um, but the course, yeah, I reinvent it because you have to, you know, it's not to say there, there, there's new labs, there's new products and everything. You can't stay on top of all of it, but, um, and the basics don't change what we're looking for you know, in the hormones and immune system and digestion and detoxification areas, energy production, nervous system balance, the new tools come out. So obviously we stay up on what those are and we, we get people who understand our way of thinking that we're not the doctors out there. They're just going to want that data to prescribe some medication, you know, treat the paper. We, we don't do that. And there, so we've got some really good lab partners now uh, who think that way. Guess so what? We're adding more labs. Labs have almost doubled in price, mm. you know. So, so we're investing a lot more in our students, um, and then the number of consultations. You know, the people who do the FDN course do three consultations, one on one with the personal mentor, who goes just over their own test results, including follows up, so that you can be walking the talk as you're learning all the anatomy and physiology and biochemistry information appears it's it's new, there's research done and on done, done on that so we've we've continuously upgraded the course um to include all of those things plus the um it became important as we've evolved to provide more business training more of the one-on-one -on -one. here's how you deal with clients mm. fortunately i spent 10 years dealing with in, in an office as a patient educator. So I've got the background and to be able to fill in all the blanks and holes for them. Our onboarding process, I think is, I call it the Bruce Lee of, of onboarding because we get right to the chase. We find out, A, can we help a person? You know, we don't let someone pick our brain. We, we say, hey, uh, first, before you tell me your life story, let me find out if I can help you. I'd like to know if I could help you first so we don't waste our time here. And we ask, we interview each potential client. So I've got that dialed into Bruce Lee, you know, eight questions. That's it. Now I know I can help you and that I want to because your answers were sane and seem like a nice person, a social person, not an antisocial. We, we teach so much around onboarding and that's why we have great success rate. We onboard the right, right client at the right price too. I teach packaging and pricing. So all of this has been added, evolved. If you think about it, uh, the very first FDN course was a two-day workshop. It was mm. a two-day workshop. And I stood in front of 200 slides and went, yeah, 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 yeah. And yet it was the best thing that the people who attended ever had been to. They'd say, I can't believe you're doing this. Well, I'd been doing it for eight, nine years at that point and, uh, and had a system already developed. It was So all we've done is take that first two-day workshop and added on. I remember I interviewed the first 2,000 people who took, said, what else could I teach you? What else do you want to know? What else would make this a better? And now it's a, a six to eight month course. Uh, take 12 months if you need to, if you're working full time and raising kids, that's okay. Um, you got plenty of time to finish and get certified. You buy the course, you have to, enter, in, you have to, you have to earn that certificate through the, uh, the, the, uh, all the processes. Uh, again, working on yourself, the practical exercises, role playing, practicing, working with clients and things like that. Um, there are quizzes after every video. I don't know how many there are, but it's a it's a ton of them. Um, I made it nice little bite sized pieces so that people can get through it. Um, they can plan out if to sit through a two hour lecture. There's no two hour lectures. I love that. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing over half an hour in any one stretch. Um, and there's a quiz. And then, of course, there's a doozy. And you well know this. There's a doozy of a final exam written. 
and you get it early so you can you can work on it kind of and then there's an oral uh, exam and you, people struggle and they get nervous and stuff but they're so glad they did afterwards on those post-grad interviews that I did everyone said you know they're so glad that those exams are there that that it proved to them that they earned it yeah you know that's uh, very important for imposter syndrome right this is something that we come up at come up against in our coaching a lot of people don't feel like they know enough or they don't feel like they're the right messenger for the message and you know by going through a process like this they're able to to really know that hey i i own this content i own this material i know it and i have the certification and and the test results to actually prove it not only that just let me interrupt and say that the other thing that developed in the since 2008 when i taught that very first class is the postgrad alumni group it's so strong we we have an association of fdn professionals it's got 600 dues paying members and that's that's a not just a feather in the cap that it was a great program that people want to stick around and have formed a community um, and it's a peer supported thing. And I, of course, have staff that work it. <clears throat> but um, the ongoing support and training and constant revision. And uh, that's also my feedback mechanism for what should be in the course. Uh, the two work very well together to keep us evolving. My final word on it is that if you have a course, it better be evolving. Mm. Yeah, time, times are, you know, definitely you know, requiring that because as the outside world changes, we need to make sure that we're continuously up, you know, upgrading and improving what we have to offer. One of the things that uh, you're doing, Reed, is you're doing some open houses right now and you're inviting students or prospective students to learn a little bit more about the course. We've got a link that we've shared where people can go and, and explore what uh, the course looks like and had a chance to look at the page. It's amazing. And uh, kudos to you for, again, continuously up-leveling. Uh, there is going to be a slight uh, adjustment uh, to reflect the increase in value. So tell us more about what students can expect with this new upgraded course. And also, when is, um, when is that uh, deadline for them to get signed up to lock in the older pricing? Yeah, well, thanks for that. And I was so excited to get your email last week asking me to do this interview because the timing couldn't be more important. Uh, I'm going to be really transparent and say we looked at our books uh, several months ago and saw that our um, margins had shrunk a lot. And it was it's all the extra labor of all the extra consultations, all the extra, extra practical exercises and things like that, plus the supervision and revision and technical support and all the stuff that goes into producing that. Everything was way up. Uh, and then the cost of the labs and the fact that now we're doing, you, you'll do four labs, blood the lab a year in stool as, as part of your tuition, that's included. So we had to set a date to raise the price by $1,000, which is maybe a 10% or more increase only. Um, but as you know, PPL uh, listeners already have a, have a discount. And you could consider it like another thousand dollars off because of the prices going up July first, which is just uh, ten days away, maybe. So, so it's perfect timing. Um, you can get everything all included. Um, PPL listeners already get a fat discount. It's going up another thousand bucks. You can get in today for two thousand dollars less than what it'll cost you in two weeks, and I think that's remarkable. Um, and it's worth it. Matter of fact, people ask me about the pricing and stuff. I say, look, there are price, there's there are courses. There's none that are as robust as ours, but put that aside for a minute. Uh, there are courses that are overpriced, and there are courses that are underpriced. Ours is underpriced. It's still an amazing value. Uh, and we're still way below the threshold of what we think the value is. So there are courses for five, six thousand dollars that are probably only worth two, relative to the amount of value and training and um, all of the the features and benefits of our stuff. So um, even at you know I think we're going up to eighty nine ninety five, um, it's still 
value that I've had PhDs and doctorate level people go through it and say that was worth more. I wish I had just spent the less than 10 instead of over a hundred thousand on what mm -hmm. I took. Yeah, I definitely agree. And there's courses that we won't name that are, you know, over $50,000 in three years and lots of flying, lots of weekends, you know, and you're kind of um, operating under somebody else's schedule to even make it work. Whereas with this, they can go at their own pace. They get tremendous amounts of value. I mean, just the savings in hotels and travel would be significant. So it's all online, which I love. They get their own experience to go through. So they're getting thousands of dollars worth of labs. And they're also having the ability to then have freedom, geographic freedom we talked about earlier, which is so important, especially this day and age. I mean, many of us are growing online brands. And if your online brand is limited by the province or the state that you live in, and you can't service people outside of those artificial boundaries and barriers, then it's hard to build that global presence that we all want to build, right? And we might get a call from somebody who's in a different country or in a different state, and we then have to try to spend our time and energy to find somebody else that they can work with instead of saying, hey, I can take your case. I'm an FDN. And using the medical director program, people are able to do that. And that actually saved me because uh, now when I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients, I can order lab testing for them. It's a seamless uh, process and it allows me to help people anywhere in the world that we can get the lab kits to. So it really is a fantastic program. That, that's, that, that's a tremendous feature. I love that you mentioned geographical freedom. And it, it's not just for the physician or practitioner who has trouble dealing with certain states that will go unnamed. We work in all 50 states. So just word to the wise on that mm. and Canada and United Kingdom and Australia and things. Some places, if you're in Dubai, uh, might be a little tricky getting the labs in and out, you know, but the, the intelligence and the, that you learn is still worth the price of admission. And remember, you can have distance clients. So people in uh, Dubai or uh, Bombay can work with all of their friends and relatives, coworkers, you know, internationally. Um, you might have clients in the United States and be doing amazing. And uh, so not only the sort of legal boundaries are, are diminished, um, what if you want to go on vacation? Every time I talk to Jen Maleka, she and her husband are in some exotic place, but you'd never know it. Her blogs are still coming out. She's still dealing with her clients all the time. My wife does the same thing. She has clients in England and uh, the Caribbean and now in Mexico um because we've been spending so much time down in Cabo like weeks at a time and uh it looks like you're on vacation you're actually kind of work vacationing and uh so not just the legal boundaries like I said all 50 states we've found a way to break those barriers um but just the, the you know you want to live your own lifestyle kind of mm -hmm. thing and Canadians too let's mention that because uh that's a big challenge for a lot of Canadians uh, in the U.S. things seem to be a little <laughs> bit more liberal, like ordering labs and things like that. However, in Canada, the rules um, can be a little bit more challenging. However, as an FDN, we're able to order the testing through the medical director program. So it really has uh, piqued, piqued my interest many years ago, dove right in. And uh, I can say as a, as a Canadian, and for those of us that are Canadian, this is a powerful tool um, to add to your tool belt to become an FDN. Absolutely. I still have this tremendous fondness for Canada uh, because it's my home country. It doesn't seem like the same country that it was when I left it. I don't know what you did to it, Sachin, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but no. So uh, all joking aside, um, we're here to help internationally change the world, man. Amazing. Amazing. I love it. Um, so here's what I love to do. I love to direct all of you. There's a link that we pasted. Check it out and explore if becoming an FDN is right for you. It was certainly right for me. It was right for my wife. It was right for Reed's wife. I've recommended, you know, literally thousands of practitioners. I've referred them and recommended FDN to them. And those who feel like it's the right next step for them, who want more freedom, who want to uh, you know, transform their own personal health, who want to have more confidence and certainty, want to build a global brand. This is a solution for each and every one of you. So I invite you to explore. 
connect with Reed and his team. He's doing some open houses. The link that you go to walks you through the curriculum. It's a beautiful web page. Uh, so thanks for creating that. I think that answers a lot of questions that people might have. And as a special bonus to you, we have a ongoing relationship with uh, FDN and right now is probably the best value proposition that we can offer you uh, at between Reed and I, which is you're going to save a thousand dollars from the price increase that's occurring. And you're going to get an additional thousand dollars off as being a member of our community. And one thing I'd also want to mention to Reed is that there are payment plans for people. So, you know, for those of you that are wanting to finance this uh, journey, then FDN does provide payment options, of course, uh, provided that you qualify. So you can spread the payments out and I believe it's as little as 297 uh, to get started. So even if uh, you, know, you just did this for yourself, it's worth 10 times the investment, but if you could turn this into a business, which of course that's the intention, then three to five new clients and you've paid for the entire investment and you're off to the races and you're a profitable business. And, you'll get that ROI just on yourself and your family. But if you could help others in your community uh, with your passion for health, then there's no other uh, easier, more affordable and practical way for you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. My, my e-commerce team has worked very hard to make sure we're up to speed with what's, what you can do, um, you know, in terms of financing and these things. And I could just say that no matter what, if you just recover some of your own health and vitality, that's worth the price of admission. The fact that we're giving you basically a business in a box for under 10 grand is just unheard of. And it's, it goes back to my roots, very blue collar type guy. I've been a hard worker. My dad told me when I was 18, start paying rent. When I ate, you know, you got to pay rent. Took me two months to find a cheaper place and move out. <laughs> That's the truth, you know, and so it was always early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and advertise in my dad's, uh, you know, so we, I've been been working like that. So I've tried to make things affordable. I'm never gouged. I always over deliver. You always want to over deliver. So I will promise you that. I love that. You know, I actually just posted on Facebook this morning that the best place for you to invest, regardless of what's happening in the world uh, but especially when things are going sideways or downwards in some cases, as they have been, the best place to invest is first in yourself and secondly, in your business. And an investment in, in the FDN is an investment in both of those things. You're investing in your health and your wellness and your personal uh, you know, prosperity, but then you're also setting yourself up to create an additional income stream or to reinvent yourself altogether with the systems that your organization provides. So Aaron, anything you want to add or, or share in terms of, uh, I know you coach a few FDNs, anything you want to add to this conversation? I, I want to thank Reed for making this so accessible. So I went to naturopathic medical school and a lot of these principles underlying principles are so aligned. I'm, I'm glad it's more accessible. If I knew about FDN when I changed careers 10 years ago, it might've been a lot shorter path. You know, I don't regret anything I did, but I'm, I'm so glad to see FDN grow and uh, the opportunities for people to transition without spending 200 grand to, to help their family, to help themselves, uh, to build a business to help people get healthy, which we're all trying to do, I think is great. I think the awareness of this is a thing is becoming more mainstream. And this, the, I feel like the time has come for our message. And uh, I want to thank you for making it accessible to everyone. Yeah, and a special message to those of you that have kind of been sitting on the fence or tiptoeing and deciding if, if doing this is the right thing for you, check out the page, have a conversation with somebody from their team, from their enrollment team, and now is that time to have that conversation. And, you know, instead of dipping your toes in the water, jump all in, and I promise you, you're not going to regret that decision because it's going to really open up some tremendous doors for you, surround you with an awesome community and give you a whole new opportunity at, at being of service to others. And th these type of businesses are never going away. And I believe that health and wellness is recession proof. So it's not something that you have to worry about like so many other industries right now. People will somehow always find a way to make themselves unwell. And when push comes oh. to shove, that's where <clears throat> people are investing their time, energy and effort is in themselves because that's where they get the biggest ROI. It's so true. When the 
big C word happened in 2020, our business boomed because first of all, we were able to say, well, we already work from home. You know, no one's sending us home. We already work from home with the distance coaching. Those that were in um, the brick and mortar type practices were able to just go home and, and, you know, get a Zoom account and continue to service their clients. So, so we didn't lose anything there. And then the people who did get sent home started, what's important to me? And their health mm. became number one thing. Number one, because of that C word thing, uh, you know, they wanted to lower their risk. So increase your health is a way to do that. And um, so we had all kinds of people jump on board uh, into the FDN course. Uh, we grew and so did our practitioners practices grow because people were at home and they were spending on their money on what was really most important to them. And I don't know of anything more important than your health and your family's health. So um, we've done it amazingly well. You will never run out of customers. Love it. Well, thank you, Reed. Super grateful for our time today and always appreciate, you know, what you bring to the table. Looking forward thank to seeing you, you in, in person here soon. We've got to make it happen. Maybe we'll meet to get meet in Mexico or something on a vacation together. Thank you for your encouragement and support. And I love you, brother. I love you too. Well, Aaron, um, thanks for facilitating and co-hosting today. Reed, thanks for joining us today. We're going to sign off and wishing each and every one of you an awesome, awesome rest of your day. Talk to you all soon. Bye for now. Thank you.